Before the Lord, before the Lord, before the Lord. Going to it's another a, church. Another church. Oh, it's happening. It's time before the Lord, before the Lord, before the Lord. I'm it's serious. I'm serious. No kidding? No kidding. I think I got to sit down. What? Look. Deacon Hall overheard this deacon talking to him inside the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. The deacon promised him head deacon and assistant pastor if he'd come over to his church. So let me see if I understand this. He came into our sanctuary, the Lord's sanctuary, to steal our deacon? Hmm. Now I'm thinking. I thought it was God's thing to do the giving and the taking away. Well, what about thou shalt not steal? Well, go on a little further, the next chapter over it says, he that taketh away a man is worthy of death. Yeah, but that's old covenant. Having said one, that might have been worth keeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so upset. I don't know, Lynn. I thought you may have been happy to see him get on down the road. Uh, yeah, you two do fight like a couple of cats and dogs. Y'all been in this house long enough to know that I have both cats and dogs? Yes, they get into a tiff once in a while, but ten minutes later, they're over there on that sofa all cuddled up. Hmm. So now, you ready to cuddle with Deacon Hall? <laughs> you ain't right. <laughs> you ain't See, right. that's a good one. <laughs> I can have that one spread on the rumor meal in about 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you two comedians. I'm heart sick about this. Sick, sick, sick. Why? Well, let's see. First off, I've gotten right fond of the old poop, you know what I mean? Second, man, there's not much that'll make my day like jerking his chain. <laughs> but honestly, I've really come to admire the man. I have. I have. I think she's got a fever. <laughs> she's becoming delirious. Well, maybe, but at the same time, I'm kind of curious right now. What do you so admire about Deacon Hall now? Y'all don't know this about me, but I spent quite a few years at a couple churches that were so steeped in traditions. You know, I'm talking about a rule book, rules and regs, 15 miles long. If you didn't do this, you weren't even saved. On the other hand, if you did do that, well, you know where you were going to end up. And the thing is, I remember how hard it was, how hard it was to break free all that mess. Hmm. So you felt like a traitor? Oh, yeah. Or maybe even it made you feel kind of guilty. You think? But listen, I have watched Deacon Hall. I've been watching Deacon Hall. And you know the kinds of traditions he's been steeped in. His daddy, his daddy's daddy, and that daddy's daddy. Far back. And all of a sudden, he's in the midst of nothing but change and turmoil around him. But I've watched him, and grumpy or not, he's hung in there. Yeah, he's definitely done that. He's done that. Except for now. Evidently, he decided not only to dump us, but Jeremiah's house, too. Oh, now I am going to cry. Oh, I'm going to cry. I can still see his face. That day he came in my office to tell us that, you know, they were going to accept Terry into their home, into their home. And I remember the look on his face. It was sheer, unadulterated uh, surrender. It's all it was, surrender to the will of God. And that day he taught me something. Oh, y'all, I'm sick, sick, sick. Look, there's some peach copper over there. Y'all go at it. 
I got to go take a walk. I just need the Lord to tell me how I'm supposed to handle this. All right. Well, there she goes out there with her animal babies. I don't understand it, but she seems to hear more clearly from the Lord when she's surrounded by feathers and fur. Yeah. Hey girl, what are you still doing here? Well, I went out and had lunch with my aunt and decided to come back and share some fresh information. Well, exactly what is that fresh information? Well now, considering this Deacon Hall thing and all, I mean, I know the timing's not great, but I knew you'd want to know this. You're sure I want to know this? <laughs> not really, but really. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. All right, give it to me. Well, she says she knows Mabel Green's replacement. And? And there's good news and there's bad news. Of course there is. <laughs> What's the good news? Well, she's a really hard worker and she will really be dedicated to her new job. Well, I don't know what the good news is about that. Mabel's a hard worker. She's really dedicated to her job and yet she could make an angel want to rip his wings right off his back. What's the bad news? Well, she's a Mabel on steroids. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going for another walk. <laughs> hey, Pastor Lynn, I didn't know you were here. Just came to get my hat. This hat? The one I've been praying over? I don't know what you're doing that for. I'm just fine. But we're not fine. You and me, we are not fine. And I think it's about time you sit down and we have a talk. About what? Okay, who's been talking about my business behind my back? Lamar, you're a leader in this church. It's not only your business, it's the church's business also. Well, if it's the church's business, I think they should have recognized my years of service and promoted me to head deacon when Spires left. You mean promoted you to a top leadership position when you were adamantly against the new pastor when everybody else was excited about the change? Do you know what division that would have caused? Well, there's no division with the people at the new church. They're excited about me coming on as not only head deacon, but possibly even assistant pastor after a year or two. How about if we just skip past all the things that get you excited and focus a little more on the things that matter to God? Like, is it a white church or a black church? It happens to be a black church, why? Do they have any members that are white, Hispanic, Asian? I don't know. Okay, maybe not. You know, just recently I heard somebody say that the solution to a divided nation is a united church. And yet Sunday is the most segregated day of the week. Pastor, people want to go to church where they feel comfortable. Comfortable? Then that ought to shame all of us because where Jesus went, that wretched tool of torture called a cross, I don't think that was comfortable. But why did he go? Because he wanted all of his people every tongue, every tribe, to be one. And the fruit of the price he paid for us ought to be on full display every Sunday in every house of worship. Pastor, I'm still going to speak with the people at the new church. Okay. And what about Jeremiah's house? You know, I thought about that. So I asked them if they'd be willing to build Jeremiah's house. And you know what? They said, sure. But do they have a heart for it? Or are they just sticking a hook in your mouth and reeling you in so you'll leave here and go with them? What, what does it matter as long as they get the job done? 
Oh, Lamar. I know this journey has been difficult on you. I do understand that. But you have to admit, God's done some wonderful things in this house that you've never seen before. Wonderful things. And we've all changed. We've all grown. I've grown. And the growth I've seen in you has blessed me beyond measure. I just don't understand why you'd want to turn your back on all that God's doing in this house. I don't understand. Pastor, I made up my mind. I'm leaving. All right. I'm sorry. You are leaving me no choice. Even though it's breaking my heart to do this, I'm forced to release you from your responsibilities as deacon in this house because your heart is no longer with us. You know what, Pastor? That's fine. It's just another confirmation that it's time for me to go. I'll see you later. Father, Lamar is your son who you love, but you and I both know he's making a big mistake. So by the power of your Holy Spirit, Father, talk to your son. Talk to him. Cause his heart to become your heart. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you.